for this traffic engineering data that we'll be using in the class. Uh, the first one is called the Annual Average Daily Traffic. That's AADT acronym, and that's measured in vehicles per day. Basically, this is what we get if we count data 24 hours a day, seven days a week in both directions uh, for one whole year, and then divide that sum by 365 days. So really annualized average, as in the name. Um, and that gives you your average vehicles per day over the course of an entire year. Um, defined as the volume of traffic moving in both directions in a 24-hour period for the most average traffic day of the year. Okay, we're really going for average here. Um, it's not typically used for highway uh, geometric design because it doesn't reflect the variation of traffic over the months of the year, days of the week, or hours of the day. Um, that's when we're going to use the DHV, and we'll talk about that in a minute. AADT gives you a rough estimate. It is possible to start with an AADT ADT count, uh, which is below here. We'll talk about that in one minute, and annualize it by applying adjustment factors to get an AADT. And your AADT is published in reports you can find it. So we can start with um, an ADT and annualize that to come up with an AADT. But for our purposes in this class, we're mostly going to be using this ADT, uh, traffic engineering data. Similar to AADT, also measured in vehicles per day, um, but it's measured over a shorter period of time. So for instance, five days, two weeks, one month, something like that, and then divided by however many days that was. Uh, we often use it interchangeably with AADT, as you'll see in some of our formulas, um, but AADT is often smaller uh, since ADT does not account for seasonable, seasonal variations. AADT is more representative than, a, than ADT, uh, but it's not always available. And if AADT is not available, ADT is used, um, and then sometimes we use those adjustment factors. But mostly for this class, we will be using this ADT measured in vehicles per day. Uh, there's the adjustment factor again. So here's an example of ADT. If we sum results from temporary counter data gathered 24-7 in both directions for two weeks, okay, so we're counting it 24-7, both directions for two weeks, then we're going to divide that sum by 14, right? Two weeks, 14 days to get the average vehicles per day. And there's some uh, ADT values, example values. Uh, for DHV, we mentioned before the design hourly volume, that's measured in vehicles per hour. And so we can get to this DHV, we can count it, that's one way to get to it, but what we often do is we take our AADT or our ADT value measured in vehicles per day, and we multiply it by an adjustment factor. And that's usually, we use a rough estimate of 10%. That 10% of this AADT or ADT and remember that's both directions measured in vehicles per day, um, can approximate the DHV. And we call that adjustment factor the design hourly volume factor, that's abbreviated by K. And like I said, it's usually used, we usually use this default value of 10%, but we can have a different K, we could be given a different K to use. Uh, this K factor is a proportion of the 24 hour volume occurring during the design hour for a given location. So you can sort of think of this K factor as getting us from that AADT or ADT from vehicles per day to vehicles per hour. Okay, it's adjusting it and giving us the from vehicles per day to vehicles per hour um, and during that peak hour. Uh, one more factor here we're going to use a lot is DDHV and that's the directional design hourly volume. That's also measured in vehicles per hour but it's all, we're gonna to go to one direction now. Everything else has been in two direction. We're gonna convert from two directions to one major direction, always the peak direction. And you can think of two directions, a 50-50 split. We're gonna assume since it's peak direction that it's 60%. So a 60-40 split. So that means our D adjustment factor is gonna be 0.6. Uh, thinking about 60%, a little over half. So we'll take that D, D, DHV, multiply it by that D, Typically use that 0.6, but could use a different factor to get our DDHV. And conversely, we can figure out if we know DDHV and DHV, we can solve for that directional movement factor from that.